said. Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Hey, guys. What's up, guys? Welcome to the partner show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I am one third of the partners. It's your boy, Tiz. With. It's the other third of the partners with the heat on like 500 right now. Um, <laughs> it's the Padawan here, and I'm along with. What's that in the man? It's your boy facing the place somewhere in the race, but I'm damn sure gonna win by the end of this thing. What's that in the fellas? Hey shit, my guy. How y'all be, man? First, um, first official show of the new year, first part of the yeah. year, the 2022 is kicked off. How y'all yeah. how is life treating y'all this week, man? I don't know why, even though it's been a few days, it felt like it's been years since I talked to y'all. Um mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm cool. I can't say I'm bad. I can't say I'm excellent, but I can say I'm riding a good wave into this new year. Um, me personally, I've only smoked two cigarettes since the last year. So I think that's good. Um, I think that's real good for myself starting out. Um, my goal is to not smoke cigarettes. I'm not going to say I'm going to quit and I ain't going to go cold turkey. I'm saying before 2023. I should have eliminated them from my whole system. So good start for me. Four days ain't only two cigarettes. Good start for me. Um, mentally, I think I've had an okay week. Um, work is okay. Always gravy there. Um, at home, home life is good. I'm supporting the wife through some she's going through right now. So definitely trying to be there for her full force. Kids have been out of school because it's snowed. So kids out of school tomorrow too because of snow. So good old VA, good old VA. So I'll be spending much daddy time while I'm off. Um, but when I go back to work, I'll be gone. So while I'm here at the house, good old daddy time's in there. Nothing like it. Yeah. I'm on up and up, make a plane. So I'd say I had a pretty good beginning of the year. I was three days in. So I mean, hey, what, 16 more days to my day. So hey, this is my way, man. This is my boy, man. This is my boy, man. Ah, oh, shit, yeah. But how, how y'all doing, though? My yeah, issue. I, I'm going to be honest. I ain't got too much complaints about I, you know, I live with anxiety disorder, so every day is a fuck, fucking uh, roller coaster ride. <laughs> roller coaster. Anxiety is shit. But what I will say is overall, life is good. Um, holidays were good. New Year starting off well. We are. The, the sun is at home just like y'all, but we are at home because they're, uh, you know, and I live in Georgia and COVID numbers are always rising here. So, COVID numbers go up. So, coming back from break, our schools are closed for the week. But we on virtual for this week and go back next week. So, I'm excited to get him up out of my house for a little bit um, next week. But life is good, man. I, I ain't going to even front. This is probably the best I've been since the mental break. So, I ain't complaining about shit, Chan. Um, just glad to be alive here, man. How can we support you, though, Faith? Uh-uh, I heard you say that. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much cool. So, I mean, like, continue to be my brothers. <coughs> Pick up the phone when I need it. Return a text if I text. As usual. <coughs> good week. <laughs> yeah, Once good again, week. Um, how can we help you? <laughs> my friend. <laughs> like listen to this on the audio like why don't you help him help him now <laughs> pat, me pat, pat me on the back guy there <laughs> yeah. oh. <Virtual> pat. <laughs> appreciate it um, how you been man um me uh um kind of actually to be real with y'all kind of up and down or whatever but everything's everything's all right uh my mother's birthday was yesterday so hey. luckily Another Capricorn. Go, 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 yeah. go, 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 Love it. Actually, today is the day I was supposed to be born. I was supposed to be a 1984 baby, but uh, oh, hey, hey, <laughs> early birthday, early birthday. So that and and somewhere in the I don't know. They said it was a blizzard or something. I decided to be born five days after Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was uh, I was kind of 
bedroom with my mom because she had like a allergic reaction or whatever. And yeah, that kind of hit me. I don't know. I just don't like anything happening to my mom. But she says she's all right. And she seemed pretty all right because she's been on the phone talking junk all day. So, but other than that, yeah, I got a, got one of my projects. My um, I did a, a drew an album cover for someone, mm-hmm. and I finally got that done. And it was actually a bit of a challenge the design of it. So I felt kind of proud of it. it actually turned out pretty better than I thought, <laughs> pretty much. So that kind of cheered me up and. Uh, so yeah, it's been kind of up and down, but other than that, I'm pretty good, man. I had a blunt, so I'm right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. What you gotta do it? You gotta do it. How can we support you this week, big dog? Oh um, man, yeah, doing what y'all normally do because y'all do it well. <laughs> oh. Hello. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I know. I'm, I I kind of tapped that a little. Too harsh. <laughs> <What a, laughs> like, I have felt a really silly man, like, but it uh feeling really, really, really off. But other than that, man, y'all y'all all uh, y'all do what y'all do, man. Like like Faith said, y'all always there when they need, so I'm I'm pretty good, man. Uh let me stop rambling. Let's just get on <laughs> It's all good, man. It's all good. But um I think we'll start this show off this week. Face bringing us some new stuff this week. Um, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Most definitely. Um, you know, normally this time we would throw it to face the screen or facing the screen. No, nah, we only going to do that with some new and hot come out that we all collectively want to see and, and we going to discuss it together. I'm going to introduce a new thing this week. Um, my, my my new thing going forward. Um, just face is shit to make you think because um, ain't nothing wrong with that. Get your mind working, man. So I'm gonna just bring five or ten things every different every other week or every week and just give them to you guys and the fans and see what we think. Um, so here we go. My first thing. It's common sense shit that no one really thinks about. Have you ever thought about this? Mirrors don't break, they only multiply. Nigga, what? what think he, about it. He kinda has a point. Yes. Cause they just split in the two and they're individual mirrors at that time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> Gotta get it. My next. How high were you when you made this list? <laughs> Not really high at all. Just really thinking. You feel like on some other shit. I'll be at work thinking on some other shit because just looking at a different culture, it just, it just gets your mind thinking about some deep other shit that you normally don't think about. So my mind just went to that one day. Like, man, you know, you break a mirror, you don't break a mirror. You just make more mirrors. So, hey, there we go. So my second thing, gonna throw y'all for a loop. Throw, throw y'all for a loop. This is two in one now. This is a two in one. Trash bags now. Trash bags. Trash bags are the only item you buy with the sole purpose of just throwing it away. Think about it. Unless I'm you trying to think of some belts. <laughs> that's how you travel. Because I, I do know some poor people that don't uh, that they lug it. But they don't buy the bag to do that. You feel me? They already use bags they got to do that. You buy trash bags to initially throw them away. <laughs> what the yeah, another it, thing about trash bags. It's about like toilet paper and tissue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toilet paper, definitely. No, you don't buy you don't buy toilet paper to dispose of. You buy toilet paper for the use of wiping your ass. <laughs> yeah, you you, buy, you throw it away, you throw it away because you don't want <laughs> okay. a bunch of I, shit paper. You feel me? I that see the you, you, no, yeah. it, but if you use that logic, then you can't say trash bags just to throw away. They're technically to hold the trash. No, not necessarily because you can get other bags. Like you can go shopping and get those plastic bags and hold your trash. You don't have to buy trash bags. You buy trash bags to throw them away. Rub it together real good or some newspaper if you want to. <laughs> that, shit ain't, that shit ain't gonna work. When you purchase some other paper, you're purchasing it knowing that you're about to flush that shit. Just like when you purchase a trash bag, you know it's gonna end up in the trash. Well, well, well. I'll, I'll, I'll be devil's advocate with that. What if you don't have plumbing and you still use toilet paper and use our house, outside shit house? You ain't using it for the sole purpose of throwing away. You using it for the sole purpose of wipe, wiping your ass. Yeah, you gonna throw it in that hole? Like our house has had a little hole. You still getting rid of it? You disposing of it? You like you're not gonna walk around with that tissue and reuse it? You ain't about to tuck that shit in your back pocket. 
some cultures might. Some cultures don't even wipe their ass with tissue. So hey, <laughs> but that doesn't dis- dispute the use of toilet tissue. <laughs> it depends on your part of the globe. Now, my second thing on trash bags: all trash bags, when you buy them, they come inside out. Before you use your trash bag, flip that bitch the right way, then put it in the trash can. Stop putting your trash bags in the wrong way. The rivets mm-hmm. go on the inside. Ever since you first told told us that, mm-hmm. I've been doing that. I've been noticing it. I'm like, you know what? That nigga face is right. Exactly. <laughs> Changed my life. Exactly. <laughs> now, my third thing to make you think, just on some hood shit. I see we ain't heard much from 6 9 since the universe came back for Alpo, huh? Nigga been real quiet, right? Oh, that is about. From six nine this past week, he got some scam he connected to with with some fake uh Ponzi scheme with a digital coin or some shit or NFT or something that he controlled shit or something. It's called code. He's That's different. To- he, he just ain't got no music out, but he's still on. He's still around. That's it's different than him trying to t- fight niggas and roll up on niggas like he was a couple months ago. He a lot less quiet. He's a lot more quiet and a lot mm-hmm. less like he used. Mm-hmm. To. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, he last time he was like with DJ Academics and WAC 100. That's because WAC 100 just probably told him to come on the damn show in the first place. But other than that, I don't see him. Hell no. My and next day. I, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> damn right. Yes, yeah, so look. My next thing. Just bringing it back to the scholastic level real quick. Okay, I touched on this last week. I don't know if we was off camera or on camera, but I touched on it just with us. Why do we teach our school, te- teach our children in school socialist ways, but expect them to understand our capitalist ways when they get out of school? And that's the shit that fucked up my life. Mm-hmm. That right there. People not gonna understand that. You feel me? Like in school, we teach our we teach kids to share. Everybody deserves this. There's no there's no winners, there's no losers. We, we we train them that way, but when they become adults, it's an instant snap into the reality and there is different classes of people and there are winners and losers and everyone doesn't get the same amount of stuff. There are rich people, poor people, and they're supposed to automatically understand that when they get adults. Teach them the right shit in school or change the way you want society to be. Can't be both. You go you haven't confused as kids and it's ended up to some a lot of these adults not transitioning the right way. And I understand the concept and being these fuck boys and fuck girls out here. I see. I, I was okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say, you tis, that's exactly. Remember, we were talking earlier off camera and I said the sky is falling. That shit that he just said right there, that would made the sky fall for me. That shit. See, I, when, I guess for me, I, I just disagree. I don't think that schools teach uh, socialism because your schools teach that. You can hustle and cheat your way to get good grades and good grades are basically like the currency. And it affords you extra privileges and allows you to get treated differently by the staff at the school and you get different opportunities than the people who are not. So I, I think it is it, teaching you both. I think is the, the main issue is that school period. It ain't even teaching you a system so much as it's just it's. Not teaching you how to live in today's society. I, I don't know that it teaches socialism so much, though. I think it depends on the school there. I think it's kind of like uh, schools are like countries and each one kind of operates depending on no, Not that it teaches socialism. It teaches kids socialist ways. You feel me? It's a, it's a difference. Capitalism. It's different. too, though, so that's what I'm saying. Like, it teaches a bunch of different ways. So I, I guess I don't don't see it as just that. But my thing is, if we had a capitalist society, why, why, why teach any socialist views? Why, am, why, why teach any of that shit? Even if we're totally capitalist, and that's what we believe in. That's the society we are. That's how our society runs. Don't teach them that type of shit. They're <laughs> stealing them from you because maybe they, maybe should be different. Like, oh no, capitalist economic system, not a way of life. It's not a government system. It's a econo- It's a way of uh, transferring currency and. Bought, buying and selling goods. It's not an actual system of societal living. So, like, societal living would be more socialist ways as far as like how you interact with your fellow human being. Capitalism and, and like those are economic constructs. But if someone lives their life like that and they only uh, only interact with people to to make money, they they live as a capitalist. I mean, if you have you're not having just social settings and social engage and engagements, or all, all your business, all your engagements are strictly business driven you you you'll 
living like that capitalist. You feel me? Like that's what I'm looking at. I, I, don't, I think I'm, you're looking at. I think you're looking at it on a more day to day, on more common man day to day thing on on, on everybody on everybody's scale. I'm talking like on a more generalized scale. Yeah, I'm talking about on a general scale. You're learning capitalist uh, thinking. You're learning socialist thinking. You're even learning some communist ways of thinking. But that's part of living in society. That as far as capital, as far as when we break down those three tenets and we actually talk about as what they are, which is economic constructs. I don't see school as teaching really any of those things. The closest I would say would be maybe. Um, Maybe capitalism, just because the way the system of moving up and how you elevate or de-elevate in society is based off grades and you can look at grades like currency. But as far as everything else, like there's no real socialist tendencies. Otherwise, every kid would get an A and every kid, like regardless of performance on in class, would have access to the exact same opportunities and that's not the case so i can't roll with that that's all so in kindergarten and preschool kids don't have the exact same opportunity no nah. aren't treated the exact same kindergarten you still get people kids with unsatisfactory and that can cause them to be held back or cause them to have to go through special remediation going into the next grade that other kids that i'm not talking about on a grading scale level i'm not talking about where i said treated i'm talking about how they're treated on the exact same way Oh, no, because if you're the good kid in class who's making great, good grades, teachers are going to treat you better. That's the nature of humans. If you are seen as more of a value to the class and you're less of a struggle for that person, people are going to gravitate to those areas of ease. So, yeah, the kids like usually the kids that are the brightest or the best behaved are usually going to get treated differently by the teachers than the kids who are less satisfactory in those areas and i think that that's all the way up from preschool on up well i see it differently because i mean me personally that's not my personal experience so and see that's the thing you're you're saying a personal experience as opposed to you say a general if we're talking about in general yes as far as what i've experienced and far as what i've seen so from my eyes seeing on, from what i personally see from the experiences i've been told from the personal experience i've experienced my that's why i formulated my opinion from it so one can only formulate their opinion from their experiences or their research. So that's how I will formulate mine, just like you formulated yours through your experience in going off the data. Like they've done studies on like exactly experience and research. So I'm saying like this is not me and my personal observation. This is a I went to a primary source and a general for myself. I think we have. A I, I think we have to like I, I think when we use words, like we got to make sure like we're. I, I understand the concept you're saying. I think that the terms you're using is what I'm getting stuck on. My next one. So black people, black people are so far ahead in the game. We've been convinced that we're playing catch up. We got to realize that we're not playing catch up. We're lapping them. We've done so much in our history that we've been, how can I say? We've been trying to convince or try to be in brainwashed that we're lower than we are. When if we truly key into our history, we see that the things that others are doing now, we've been doing years and years ago. The knowledge of that just is not widespread. But as we see with the advance of technology and the more research people do, and the how can I say the I, mean, I don't want to use woke, but I guess you could say the more woke people are becoming, they're realizing how great you feel like our culture is just on the level of being colored people or being from African descent. Me personally, I think that's one of the main reasons why we are treated like we are to a certain extent. But that's just my opinion. I think that's definitely how we ended up here. I, I definitely say that was a tool that the colonizers to enslave us in the first place. Um, I think now it's more about the resource distribution that's the problem. Like I think a lot of people we know that we that our history is great. It's just that now we've been in bondage so long, we've lost access to the resources that used to go with that intellect. Like we used to be the shit because we were creating everything and we were getting paid off of it. So we were building the wealth. Like that's why all of the Africans were the center of like literacy, finance, all of that. People were coming there to get that. I think what I think now know that we have that history, but because we got separated from the ability to monetize that for so long, we're behind the eight ball because 
we don't have the resource. Like we're on a race now to try to catch up with the resources and build those resources back up so that we can level the playing field. But I definitely agree that, that a lot of the way we got here comes from them raping us of that knowledge of who we are. I think black people are automatically have like an innate ability to create blue pretty much. And, and, and because of that, we build a lot of culture just mm-hmm. automatic. A lot of things in the culture and the modern culture right now uh, that celebrated is basically straight from black culture that has become how say used so much that it's a norm. So now it now that it's being used so much and we're actually getting embraced and, and, and it's almost feels like it's a trend to just like go anything black right now. Oh yeah. <clears throat> we're cool. Yeah. But it's just like you said, Tiz, it's, it's, it's just that we, I, I feel like we just got to the point of knowledge that the one thing that we lack at is the way to di- distribute and within our own yep. people, in our own community or whatever. I think we just got to that point. Now we're at a point of like, how do we go ahead and build this infrastructure that we know we need to have? We just don't know how to make it. Or, I mean, there might be people already in play that already know how to make it or whatever or whatever. But like I said, it might be a resource thing or something like that. But we, I, I feel like on a positive note, we like um, we got into a point of knowledge that we can we can make. A, a, oh man, I don't want to be cliche and make a change, but make a, a pivotal. Um, how you say it? evolutionary drift i don't know evolutionary jump pretty much but uh that's just what i felt about what you i I feel like we just got to get to a point of yeah i think we got beat down so long and lost the ability to get resources from our creations for so long that now that we are starting to realize how great we are it's a fight between ourselves almost a lot of times of like Okay, I'm creative too. So I'm going to try to keep all my stuff instead of I'm creative and I've just created this new thing and I'm starting to get revenue from it. And you've done the same thing in another round. Why don't we merge this and put it together and see how we can leverage it to make something bigger from it? And I think that's where we got to get to is like we're getting there with the knowledge It's just let's pool the resources so that we can build the resources quicker to level the playing field. That what you just said um, about we almost like we go against each other, that it just uh, clicks something in my head where it's you notice that <clears throat> pretty much in American history, there's always like a token black. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but in American history is always like a token black. You can only have but like one black or this many blacks at one time in media or something like that. Or whatever. I think that whole visual right there or whatever, we're so used to thinking that it's only supposed to be one top black person or whatever that we end up fighting against each other. We we pretty much made a culture of it because what is battle rapping? You know, like that's pretty much the essence of it almost. But um, I think I think that but now I feel like we're we're breaking out of that mentality. It itself um now that we have more examples and more representation out there um so i, I think we're in an age of realization right now so i hope so mm-hmm. uh, i hope that we again realize how that we can have if we just armies that would allow us to dominate trade situations and allowed us to have leverage in negotiation. So we just got to get that. So, so now that that's over, I want to introduce a new segment after that new segment. Um, just a little quick thing, just going against the grain where we each share something that's an unpopular opinion that we share or individually have about popular things or popular culture or just normal things. So I'll go first. Uh, me personally, I hate mac and cheese, and I don't say grace before every meal. Well, I'm going to tell you how, un, how popular that unpopular opinion is on this podcast, because two out of three of us can roll with that. Um, I would say I say grace before most meals, but I do miss it sometimes. 
Um, and uh, mac and cheese ain't my favorite because I can't eat no cheese. So fuck mac and cheese right now. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much lactose anyway. So I rather and I really haven't been a fan of mac and cheese anyway. So yeah, would and I'll be like, thanks God, and man, yeah, uh, I have no I'm problem. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely the worst at that. <laughs> so we are here with you. <laughs> like, thank you, God. I was hungry. Yeah. That's my usual prayer. Well, all right. Um, one thing I don't believe in and I go against the grain is jaywalking. What does that mean? Going across the street instead Walk. of going at crosswalk or like the you don't that's what you, you do jaywalk. I I'm for jaywalking. I'm I jaywalk all the time. I have never gotten a ticket for jaywalking. I've gotten a ticket for standing in one spot in uh, on the strip before, before I've ever gotten a ticket for jaywalking. And I think it's pretty stupid because uh, if I got to get across the street, sometimes the busiest place to cross the street at is right there at that crosswalk. Yeah, it, is a waste of a law. Huh? it is a bit of a waste of a law. Like, I don't really know why that's on the book still. Like, I walk across the street wherever I feel safe and keep it pushing. Mm-hmm. Ain't about to walk no extra half a block to comply with some line. Ain't no robot. Ain't no mm-hmm. since I was a kid. Like, I don't think it's safe for me to cross the street. I'm not going to cross the street. Mm-hmm. Much, so I feel like there's so leeway, and this is the perfect time before these other cars come out of the blue. I'm crossing the street, crosswalk or not. So, yeah, jaywalking is stupid. Well, I'm a damn sure agree with you. Um, I guess that puts it on me, and uh, I think my opinion will probably be the most unpopular, at least among listeners, um, out of the three. Um, I like partying with other races, races more than black people a lot of time. Um, yeah, I feel like we can be a little bit too stuck on image and trying to be cool and shit, and I feel like other races kind of just lose themselves in the fun of the moment, and I've noticed that I've had a more fun, safe, Yet really wild and crazy night hanging with other races, sadly, a lot of times, or at least in extremely mixed company. So, uh, yeah, that's my uh, going against the grain. So I can't really I disagree pretty much because, yeah, my experience, um, I'm pretty much the same or whatever. I ain't going to lie. I had some parties, um, all black parties. It was cool. But yeah, other than that, so weird. I mix around with everybody. So. I love my black people more than everybody. But strictly partying. Yeah. I said what I said. We good at showing out, but partying and everybody else. If you got a problem with I, it? Second Amendment. I think people with the, uh with a more stable eco- economic community party better in general because they have the economic community. Now that's where- a- they can have losses at that you would have at a party and not have to worry about it the next day. It's more fun. But like in my impoverished days, I noticed, man, like I had fun, but it was a lot more I had to think about in the evening. Mm-hmm. A lot more I had to be on point with or like worry about. Like it was more of a concern that and, and I hate to say it, but it could just maybe that's it. Maybe I don't like maybe I would prefer partying with people that are not impoverished more than yeah, maybe that's it. I'll say it for you. Because I don't <laughs> parties in the suburb in the hood. Yeah, well, when you said that though, I'd have, I'd have had some, I'd have had some scary moments in some trailer park situations with some Caucasians too. So I can't necessarily uh, like impoverished energy. That yeah, it's stressful. Oh no, nah, I, I ain't never doing that. I'm never getting that too close. I, I, know, I know I'm gonna get beat the fuck down in the comments, and I'm cool with that. I, I said what I said. I told y'all, 2022, I'm not holding my tongue. I'm not going to try to sound good. Uh, man, look. Yep. I, I said it. I said it. And uh, I guess that takes us to our next segment. Yay! All right. So um, everybody been coming with these new segments. So I figured I would uh, come through with a new one as well. Um, this week, I'm coming with something I'm calling Tiz's Matrix. What we're going to do is uh, every week for a little bit, I'm going to be bringing one tenet of red pill ideology and discussing it with what I consider two real men and seeing if the tenet is if it holds up like, yes, this is something that a real man should follow or it, it holds weight 
or if it is straight bullshit. And by the end of this uh, journey, the goal is to debunk the bullshit about what manhood is and settle on some real man criteria that like makes sense for men to actually follow that will actually get them through society in the world we live in today in 2022. So yeah, the first tenet of red pill ideology that we are going to dig into is they believe that men are beta or a secondary male if they are not the provider of the house. Do we agree with that? Is that viable? Is that bullshit? Or is it viable back in the day and just doesn't hold weight anymore? Either one of the partners can jump on that one. I, I would have to say for a lot of that stuff that they say beta and alpha about, I almost feel like you would have to feel beta to completely believe all of that shit that they say because they it completely rule out circumstance. That's real. Like, that it, it completely rules out circumstance. Like it's it doesn't anything can happen to you and put you in a place where you're beta now. You know, you could be the richest person and the craziest thing can happen to you. And next thing you know, you can't supply for yourself unless you that insanely rich that you got pulled like that. But it's not that many people out there. Like if that's the case, then it's a handful of alphas out there. And it's all because they're rich. I, I don't think you can really place that type of categorizing of men or whatever. And that, I don't know, it's, 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 it's freaking degrading. It sounds like the, the shit that they used to do with slaves or whatever, you know, mandingos and this, that, and the third. Like it just, that categorizing of stuff. It just, uh, but if I would, I would, I will say this, if you, as a man, you, instinctually want to be a provider if a circumstance have you in the set and in the situation where you're not the immediate provider at that at that time your man brain is going to kick in and try to do something to uh accompany what can be done to provide until you get to a point where you are the provider your goal in your head is to provide you for yourself because it is as a man you don't think like you don't normally think, hey, I'm going to I can count on this person. You automatically think I'm the only person I can think of that can help me right now. First, not to say that we don't have friends and family and this, that, and the third. But the first thing you're thinking of, I have to do this, me as a man or whatever. So I guess if you don't have that mentality, maybe you're beta. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about straight up, right now i'm not the provider or whatever or this that and the third or you're just looking at somebody because of the circumstance right then right then and there i can't i can't categorize with that it just seemed like some degrading shit if you get what i mean i don't, I don't know if i'm running out of tangent but that's yeah gotcha, gotcha. praise my what you think um <clears throat> i lean towards what pat says for us being more situational but at that same time, it being more to like uh, to each his own. Some people accept the role of being bigger and just kowtow to their woman, whatever they say. You feel me? And have no standing at all. But your financial presence to me in the household gains no bearing as far as alpha or beta. Um, you could be the sole provider and still be a simp with your money and be stupid as fuck and, and not run your household and be ran over. So in essence, you can still be the provider and be a beta, mm -hmm. just because you go make it, just because you go make the money don't mean you provide it. Um, and just because you're not making the money doesn't mean you're not the one making the decisions about what what is done with the money. And you're not the one running the household. Um, as far as the term alpha and beta being linked with who who has the sole providership, like I said, I think that's a humdrum old ass term. Um, really, really old really really outdated um back in the day where a real man went on and did this but a real man didn't know how to do anything in the household where nowadays a man has to know how to do everything outside the house inside the house and know how to get a dollar so because at the end of the day you, make survive. You, know to, you feel me like i know how to take care of yourself man you gotta have, have to have skills to survive like i don't know how nobody else parents raised them but my mother raised me to be able to 
take care of the house outside the house and go outside and make the money to, to do for the house. You feel me? So, I mean, that's just natural skill for me. I don't know if that makes me an alpha or a beta, but I mean, like, I do what I need to do to take care of my house. So, uh, that, that categorizing shit between the two. I mean, I, I, I see what they mean in people, but as far as on an everyday scale, I feel like everybody has their both moments. So, in a house, so if you in the house with your woman, y'all has to give and take anyway. So, one of y'all going to be a beta at some point. One of y'all going to be an alpha at some point. Uh-huh. Uh, that's just how I see shit. That's real. Um, I think I definitely agree with y'all. So I think we're going to end up leaning that this is a bullshit tenant. Um, but <laughs> I ended up looking up like alpha and beta male just to make sure that I had the correct definition because, uh, you know, I'd be stuck on semantics like shit. Um, so... I looked it up and basically an alpha male is a male that takes a dominant, domineering or leadership role in a society or in a household or in an animal group. A beta male is one that takes a subordinate role in a society, animal group, household. So with that being said, I'm looking at it like finances, for one, has nothing to do with those two terms. Domineering, dominant, subordinate. Those are two very specific positions or hierarchies in a society. Like you are either one of the people who are stepping up and stepping forward to lead something or to run something or to initiate something or to do something, or you are the one stepping back and following what someone else is doing for you or doing and you're taking that. So I think that's very clear. Like most men I know that we would consider men. I think that's what it really boiled down to in that case, being like most men I know would be alpha in that case, because most men I know, even in a grouping of themselves, it's a constant like everybody standing on their own square is nobody like, oh, well, I'm going to do what you say. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's the go along and get along mentality, as Kwame Brown would call it, like mm-hmm. that type of, I will just roll with what my woman says. Even if I'm the one making all the money, I might be paying every bill, making all the money, buying all the cars, clothes, all that, and still following what she said. Then I'm still a beta, like Faye said, like that, that still fits that role. So I think when you define alpha and beta, I think first, the first tenant goes out the window. Mm-hmm. Alpha or beta, for one, we really just established two things. For one, finances have nothing to do with your rank in your house or in society in general. For two, alpha and beta have an actual definition. So people can't keep running around saying I'm an alpha male, but you're uh, like uh, you're following behind some other dude. Like even when you look at them, uh, what's the dude? Fresh and fit. Like Uh there's a clear dynamic there. Like they're not on equal playing fields. Like one says something, the other one just parrots it. He never has a difference of opinion. He never even has his own opinion. Half the time, he doesn't even answer a question until after he hears what the other one says and then is like, oh, yep, that's what I think, too. Yep, that's a beta mentality like to me. Like, And I don't care how much money nobody got in that situation. That following mentality is what I would consider beta. So, like, yeah, I think we kicked that one out of here. So tenant one of the red pill is actually some blue pill shit because it still got you stuck on some bullshit instead of following the truth. Alpha and have a definition. And it's not your finances that determine that. It's how you are moving as a man. Are you moving in a position where you are stepping up, initiating things, leading things, or uh, standing on your own too and push and driving something? Or are you taking a back seat and riding along the wave and that determines. So there, Red Pill community, tenant one, sadly, it bumped. Get your ass out of here. Next up, next week on The Matrix, I think we'll be digging more into how they feel about the ladies. See y'all then. I like them. I like the ladies. <laughs> we got the ladies man voice. <laughs> What's that dude now? Ladies man. Let's go. <laughs> That shit was I mean, left, left the bibs or was it left the fifth? I can never remember. I think, but some would have like alliteration. It was like the same letters in the beginning and the middle. Man. Is that you with the Ravens? <laughs> yeah, every time there's a weird silence for no reason, I just, you know. I thought, I thought face went outside or something. 
<laughs> the first time you did it, everybody like everybody. Was off. You can look at him right there and see him. No, I was saying the first time you did it, the cameras was off. Oh. I thought face was outside in the country or something smoking. I was like, that, that, that nigga face went outside. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. But <clears throat> dang, man, I it was something you said earlier and something clicked in my head. And I wish I just would have yelled it out because I forgot it. <laughs> but anyway, is it about that time? I think so. Hold on. It is that time then. All right. And if it's that time, what is it? It's episode 59 and it's season two. Good and fuck around. Fuck around. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to hear the horns. I had to pull out the trumpet this time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck you just say? <laughs> Remember that one time I pulled out the trumpet? <laughs> oh, good. I was like, what? Where are we going with this right now? We got the sound system now. We don't gotta I don't gotta pull out all the instruments. <laughs> I mean we don't feel free, you know. If you want to pull out a prop, that's n- <laughs> a board ain't gonna never take the place of that, you know. Hey. All right, man, let me call my silly ass now. I've been laughing since I tapped the blood earlier. Anyway, um, well, first, um, let me get my respects out of the way. Um, uh, rest in peace to one of my favorite Capricorns, Betty White, as she passed on New Year's Eve. Uh, yeah, yeah. Comedy legend, like real OG, one of the funniest ladies ever. One of the funniest comedians I ever period. Like, that's a funny lady to me, way back on Golden yeah. Girls. Uh, everything. Yeah, her interviews, everything, man. Shout out to her. She was a real legend. Yeah, I don't know how old she was when she passed, but she's been around for a long... 99. Oh, wow. God bless me. I think as a, if it's if it's not this week, it's next week. But she would have been, you know, of course, obviously a hundred or whatever. So, but salute to the Capricorn Betty White. Mm. Um, another legend that passed. Rest in peace to the Mac Max Julian dies at eighty eight. Oh, pimp down. black exploitation legend. Pimp, pimp down. Salute to the legend. R.I.P. to the king. Damn, the Mac. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mac. That's cold. That's that's a man. Black exploitation film at his finest, like one of the greatest black exploitation films ever. Like that was Mac. one of the movies, bro. I saw it. I saw it randomly on Facebook. I was like, I always wait before I post off. I was like, nah, they just messing with me. They just messing with me. I did the same thing with Betty White or whatever. And then I saw it on Snoop Dogg's Instagram. I was like, oh no, I got it. it's true. It's mm-hmm. true. It's true. I know Snoop was hurt. Probably a official with the pimp game. Yeah. Well, rest in peace to two legends, man. Who, who been rest in peace. Year. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Let's get right into the rest of the good and fuckery. Matter of fact, I'm gonna save that. Let's go to the first one. Um, yeah. So Kodak Black is willing to bet 15% of his catalog in a versus a it's Jay Z. He's stupid as fuck. Hold on, say that one more time. What? Say that first part. <laughs> I have the second dumb part. What's the first part you said he's willing to do? Who the what? The first dumb part. Kodak Black is willing to bet fifteen percent, only fifteen percent, but it's still fifteen percent of his catalog in a versus against Jay Z. What the fuck you just say? <laughs> look at look at um mm, Kodak K- K- Kodak mm-hmm. Black. From Florida <clears throat> is willing, willing. This is his idea. He thought of this. He thought this was a great idea okay. to bet fifteen percent of his catalog in a versus against Jay Z. And if he wins, he has to get like um, some type of executive um, job at Rock Nation. I'm, matter of fact, I'm gonna look it up right now. I think he want to be vice president or something at Rock Nation. His whole catalog up against reasonable doubt losers. His whole catalog up hard knock like two losers. His hard, his whole catalog up against black album losers. His whole catalog up against blueprint one and blueprint two losers. What the fuck are you talking about? His whole catalog up against four 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 losers. His whole catalog up against the the Carter's album losers. God damn it, nigga! What sir, are we talking about here, sir? I just watched the the B side. 
Well, I just watched his B side concert. The B sides. Some of them I don't even consider them B sides. But the B side concert was awesome. Is nobody beating JC? That's the dumbest <laughs> shit I'd have heard, bro. And, and, and all he had was just Blaze, uh, Tata, and a band. Just Blaze. A live band. I don't know about Jay Z and a live band that just is awesome. But nah, you you can't play those can't play those Kodak Black tracks with the live band. Yeah. To a whole nother level that pisses me the fuck off. Okay. All right. Um okay. Kodak, Kodak Black, Black, Black wrong is too. known Kodak for Black. saying random things that would probably piss people off. Um he's also the person that tried to come on to um what's her name? Lauren London. I'm about to say now look, yeah. Lauren London, young, it was, young, M- M-A. young, young M.A. Because I was about to say Mia X. I don't know why. Young M.A. Young M.A. He was trying to get in the draws of Young M.A. And Young M.A. replied, that's gay dog, basically. <laughs> it's just kind of ironically hilarious. Fucking funny. That's, yo, yo, so, I don't know. Kodak Black is good for saying stuff you take for a grain of salt, basically. But me personally, I kind of want to see him go through that. I don't want it really happening, but I kind of want him to go through that. Like, I want him to just see the greatness of Jay in his own element and then try to compete with that and then understand where he relies in the universe. Because I, I feel like that's what Jay Cole was talking about the kindness. <laughs> I see Jay Z concert, but um, Kodak, you wild, man. Come on, bro. Like, <laughs> leave that lean alone or them pills or them perks or them zans, whatever got you saying that shit. Go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I'm, not, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the dreads, man. I think it's the dreads. They're, they're tapping into the, like, frequencies in the air and stuff like that. Boom. Oh, stupid. Yeah, really. Really stupid. Speaking of stupid, I'm kind of jumping around, but Antonio Brown mm. quit. Man. Did he throw I, I, a NFL career for nothing? Nigga, they have let you back in 30 times for some real shit. You 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 let this be the reason that you gotta go. Nigga, you are stupid. And I don't I don't, I don't like to call another black man stupid, but damn it, that was stupid. Stupid is <laughs> you are an intelligent person. But you know what? Let me be real before I go any further. Let me let me check myself in 2022. Dude might got CTE. Mm-hmm. True. Because I, I, I remember back on uh, early first tape when him um, and with two other receivers that was there at the time and Pittsburgh had like a great three, like they had like a big three receiver group and all three of them was there. And Antonio Brown was like maybe a rookie or his second, third year. And he was completely different than he is now. So like uh. something happened somewhere in there. I don't know what, like, but it's something, it's something that is different. That's got him making these impulsive moves like that, like on some real shit. Not to be funny, like he, it, I want to make some jokes, but on some real yeah. shit, like pattern of behavior has escalated and has gotten weirder and weirder over the mm-hmm. past like, maybe five years. And it wasn't like that before. So when somebody make a drastic change like that, something is wrong. Yeah, and before, because before we get into it, and I'm I'm glad you bring that up because I want to catch myself. I feel like. That's the same thing Dave Chappelle was talking about, whether you say you call somebody crazy and that's dismissive or whatever. And they were saying that he was crazy because he turned down Comedy Central. I little know. In my head, what made me check myself, I literally was like, hold up. Well, I call somebody crazy. Let me think about Dave Chappelle. Okay. Let me go. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's why. Go ahead. Well, no, no, that's pretty much it. Like, I, that's what, that's what I was thinking. I was like, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And, in the back of my head, I feel like that's what's, what's it has to be something. Something is frustrating. Something is wrong, bro. It, no, it's, no, you don't no, act no, like that no reason. all of a sudden and start this down with power without something being wrong, whether it be depression, whether it be loss, grief, drugs, mm-hmm. alcohol, so the abuse, so, like, so, it's trauma. Something happened. Mm-hmm. And, and I really believe it might be CTE. Like, People, like these football players be having some wild stories. Like, you remember that dude Ray Carew? Nigga killed somebody and hit him in the car. Yeah, Ray Carew. I remember that. I remember that. You kill somebody and put yourself in the trunk 
it, it's some there. Like it's something taking all them damn hits to the head that ain't it. like them and them boxers, yo. Like it's something. We gotta pray for them, yo. There's no like it makes no logical sense that this whole time that nobody ready. Like they have to know that this something's gonna automatically happen. Like anybody in the world knows that if I get keep getting hit in the same spot over and over again, something's gonna fuck up. Right. Like, and it it don't Maybe matter how much tech or whatever, it, it still might be a little bit of wear and tear. You know what I'm saying? And it after a while, it's just like not taking care of a car. One thing after another after another, something just go out. What you say, Faith? They know they don't care. True. The, the coaches, the staff, no, they don't care because they want to win championships and gain more revenue. The players, no, don't care because they want that money and they're looking at the short term and what they can do for themselves and their families. So they're willing to risk that, but they don't realize some of them long. They think that could be long term and they come quicker than they may expect in some cases. So everybody trying to get something for nothing, but the the, the consequences are a lot realer. Than a lot, excuse me, a lot more real than people expect. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wonder where his friends and family at. Like, where are the hangers on? That's like, all right, shit was good, and y'all was chilling with me. Like, well, where are you at now? Like, where's auntie, uncle, cousin, brother, sister, mother, father? Like, where's the the homeboys that from the hood? Like, where's somebody to like pull it yes. and go like, so, bro, I see yeah. the help that you need. Let me go get it for you. <laughs> let me let me step in here, like. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. what the nigga said, yeah, if every nigga is rich, you know, nobody will fall there, everyone will be each other's crutches. That shit go to like mentally being rich too. Like, if you see your homeboy falling, like, especially if you wanted a homeboy hanging on, like, damn it, that's the money train. Like, why would you watch him spiral down? Like, nigga, step in, help him out, hold your boy down. Can't be no yes man in this type of situation. Like, your boy hurting himself, like, jump in there, be a friend. Yeah. It, to take a red pill turn if he's a person that's surrounded himself with yes men, aka betas or whatever, they're probably not there to tell him anything. And then, you know, you never know. You know how money means changing people's relationships or whatever. Yeah. Um, from, so, like, it might have been something and then some cross the, uh, somebody said something or expected something out of him or something like that you know he just got more and more distant with the people he might have got around but i don't know him i'm just putting out possibility of what could you know just you know perspectives no, but, 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 um, they need to get the brother have some help man like somebody in his crew and i ain't talking about the nfl and all that because i don't expect them to do shit like I don't know that nigga on a personal level for real, for real, for real. So, like, I don't expect them to do nothing. But, like, friends of Antonio Brown, family of Antonio Brown, if you claim to love this dude, like, don't watch a boy, like, make decisions like that and just sit there. Like, pull him to the side, handle that shit privately, but get your boy to help you be, man. Like, that's, you can't, like, fuck that. Jump in, do something. There's always something you could try to do. And I don't I can't see where nobody's making an intervention because somebody like that don't make this many back to back to back to back to back fuck ups in this magnitude and this publicly without somebody being there that's like actually like it should be a nigga in his clique that's like I'm on on the sideline with you nigga like me and you I, I, I'm getting clearance from the team you, you get in the whatever I'm gonna get clearance from the coach and I'm gonna stand on the sideline with you and I'm gonna be the voice in your ear every time you about to spiral like hey bro remember your future man hey it's me. You know what I mean? Like, you got to have them, somebody to have them check-ins with you. You know what I mean? If, if there's something going on off the field that we don't know about, hey, hey, man, no, nah, we ain't going to do that no more, bro. I'm going to then- personally, since shit, since I'm living with you anyway, probably, I'm, I'm going to live with you and I'm going to make sure that shit, everything good. Hey, yeah, I got you. No, nah, we ain't bringing that around. No, nah, he can't have that kind of company no more. Like, you know what I mean? Like, somebody got to do something, man, if, if they love this dude, man. And, and that's the sad part of that. I feel about all of this. Like it seemed like he don't have nobody to love him. Cause for this to be going on this long and the type of shit that's been going on, you can only have the public shit. What the fuck is happening behind closed doors that ain't been reported or that ain't make it to the news? Unless you got one of them personalities where you just cannot be around him too long. And that's the reason why he don't got people around him. 
because I can imagine if you can act that way, it could be like, like I, you know what? I can't be around you, man. You you wild too much. You're wilding too much. You're wilding too much. You're not listening to me. I'm saying stuff to you, but you're not even listening. You know what I'm saying? So, but mm-hmm. prayers to Antonio, his people. But. Prayers to him, because if that is the case, we've seen this movie before. We've seen mm-hmm. him, and it don't end good for him. So please, more. Now speaking of people of needing help, pretty much. Um, and Faith might know a little bit of, about this since it's around his way. Um, Virginia storm leaves motorists stranded on I ninety five for hours. Like a blizzard or something. Yeah, it was snowing on Monday. I was, I mean, I'm in the seven five seven, so it was just like flurries to where we were. But in the middle of Virginia and up north. Um, matter of fact, listening to some of my customers, they got affected a lot. Matter of fact, what is um, I'm trying to go to the uh, Josh Lederman from NBC News, he was in it and he says, For the last seven hours, I've been stuck in the car, not moving in a total shutdown of I 95 northbound by about 30 miles south of DC. Oh, damn, it just sound like mm-hmm. when we had it down here in Atlanta when everybody was like getting out the cars and having to walk home like 10 or 15 miles and weird shit like that like yeah I, oh yeah, something like that yeah he said, this morning. he said it was like 2 a.m and um they were still stuck out there it was like should we leave the car on should we leave it off should we bundle it up for the night what, what's going on he said uh nine hours and he still haven't seen like uh like a plow or anything out there at that time Damn. And for yeah. A long time. Cause like Virginia is actually a state that's prepared for winter weather and stuff. So you would have thought they would have had the salt trucks and plows out there pretty efficiently. But it, it depends on, I guess, what area too. Like if they could actually get there and shit. Like, face you good up there, man, with a, that snow shit, man. I ain't know it was like that when you said the snow. I thought it was like, you know, just regular shit. Not we stuck on highways and shit for hours. I don't know. That's up in Richmond. I'm out in the country and shit, man. We good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah, everybody in the city got stuck and shit. Um, 95 North. Yeah, that shit shut down. Um, one of them politicians was stuck in that shit for a few hours. I think Northern or somebody. No, I don't know which mm-hmm. one. My people tell me about that shit earlier. Now I forgot who it was, but they were stuck in traffic. There was a lot of motherfuckers out there. That shit was on the news. Shit was in the news. They was down here and shit. But to be real, if they're mm-hmm. out there, because usually they'll, they'll go get their peoples. Okay, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. no more, want no move, no more, that shit. No, uh, and if I know if it's jam packed, shut down, so, but people can't drive anyway, so. This is true. It, 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 people panic when it starts snowing, they see flakes, and start swerving it automatically because they just see snowflakes, don't be none on the ground, just the anticipation or something. Mm-hmm. Those people are also, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, I guess, it's a mind fuck, so. But that's that's just different people. I want to tell you the true mind fuck is that Saturday it was seventy seven degrees. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's been warm, and you were here, Tiz. It's been warm this yeah. whole from Christmas to the New Year. Yeah, it was nice as hell. And then as soon as you leave, and it's Monday, boom, <laughs> snow. And that's, and that's the sad. The funny part is, I wanted to see the snow. Mm-hmm. I was hoping like shit while I was at home. Oh, please, that's a for dry. That's a flurry or two. Me and the son was like, we've been begging for some snow area where we go. So I, I'm mad we missed it because down here, uh, they say it's going to happen, but it's going to happen in northern Georgia. So we still ain't going to see shit. I just want a flurry or two. I just want my boy to be able to make a snowball one good time. Yeah, before the world, you know, start totally getting hit by global warming. Is that too much to add? It's just a snowball. Cause, shoot, as warm as it was, I was wondering if we were going to even have a winter. We we're going to just skip right to spring, pretty much. That's a big fact. As God came in, I was like, oh, <clears throat> yeah, I woke up. Here you go. Here's a little snow. I got that. Hold my beer. I got that. There you go. <laughs> Hold my beer. <laughs> Hold my beer. Oh, man. All right. So, main good and fuckery and for the go, pretty much. Um, so, one good. Kanye West is reportedly working on Donda 2, which I figure is going to happen anyway, because I feel like he was going to have a whole 
he probably have a whole bunch of random music he just haven't released out yet anyway. So I felt like that was going to come pretty much. Um, I'm not mad at it. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I remember when we did the Donda like review. Mm-hmm. It, like I was like, okay, Edverse Certified Love Boy at the time, I was like, okay, I remember saying CLB might be the one for right now, but Donda gonna be the might be the one that like grows on you and grows on you. Like mm-hmm. I fuck with Donda. Mm-hmm. I did not the first night. I thought it was stupid the first night. But it's <laughs> one of them things, like the more you hear the song there, like the more they start, you know what? This is fucking amazing. This is good. I like it. <laughs> and now this should be bumping through my career. So yeah, I'm not mad at a Donda too. Give me more. I'll take a jail three, please. Give me a junior three, please. Not mad at you. Yeah. Lord, I need for you to wrap your arms around me. <laughs> Somebody need to wrap. Because <laughs> uh, the fuckery, <laughs> beat, fuckery is this guy buys a house right across from Kim Kardashian. Oh, come on, man. You give me some good. <laughs> you give me the fuckery right in a second. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, man, I was like, oh, this is just good. I that was great. Oh, damn it. I didn't go with Kanye. He's a Gemini. You're going to get the good end of fuckery. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> good end of fuckery. I think he's just waiting for Pete Davidson to come out the house so he can actually contribute. How the hell? Can somebody please tell me how the fuck this nigga Pete Davidson keep bagging everybody woman? Ain't this like the third, like, either. I told you that he didn't have, like, he is just taking everybody woman. Oh, you say he's funny. This, mm. oh, he is making bitches laugh to the to the panties drop, <laughs> and that's how he survived this, all his years. This nigga get a giggle. He just well, that's like a foul <laughs> Don DeMarco. Mm. He's it. funny and he say nice things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Pete Davidson out here slaying everything, man. Yeah, damn. I'm gonna tell you this though. Kanye, what, like five nine, five eight, five seven, somewhere in there. He like one of the rappers, right? He, he both though. He been in the gym. Davis in a good six foot tall. I don't know. I don't know. Kanye want to run a bone that get Donkey Kong in the top of his shit. He might want to go ahead and uh make sure that he just you know pay his homeowners association dudes and uh stay real quiet around there. I don't know that he want to go over there and start fucking around. Plus, Kim seems like she'll call the police on his ass. <laughs> you know that no. Nah. Mar- yeah, so much they're gonna tolerate from a Negro. And then I Kanye didn't seem like the type here call the police on their damn self before he go across the street. Hey, look, this is Kanye I'm about to go across the street to Kim's house. You might want to come out here. You yeah. right uh, like uh, that. Yeah. This nigga go over there with a police escort to stop. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you see okay. me? just looking through the yeah. window. That's nothing. Okay. Pete mm-hmm. Davidson is six three. Oh, all right. Yeah, it, kind of, the shit out right. it makes it <laughs> makes it makes more sense. Down thunder on that nigga, man. That nigga taller than Chewy, I think. Yeah, he, 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 he look like a, but he's a tall meth head. He's like a tall zombie looking. Yeah, but see, with dudes like that, he'd be lanky. Yeah, but they be having like big hands and big feet, which means like if he swing one of them hands mm-hmm. and it got that loose. That loose lanky arm is like a it's like swinging one of them old uh maces from back in I mean one of them flails from back in medieval days with the spikes on mm-hmm. it. Like basically like a wrecking ball on a chain, like ah like, he, even gotta, with no good, <laughs> he can just kind of like overhand windmill that shit and just a thud on the top of <laughs> your head. It's a wrap. And it ain't gonna leave no mark. So like <laughs> Why he always looks short to me, though? That's the... F- I did uh, not know he was this tall. Well, because he's slim, for one, so he he's not going to look like he's huge, and he's a lot of times when you see him, he be sitting at that uh desk, or he's like... <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So you don't really see him all the time at his full, like, standing up height, or he's on a podcast or interview or some shit, you know what I mean? But, like, yeah. yeah. Put that nigga beside Tom Cruise. You'll see the... Day. And Pete, and, and God dang, uh, Kanye is five... Yeah, I did not know she was short. Huh. Oh yeah, yeah. The only tall one is uh Chloe, and she like what five five ten five eleven something like that, maybe six feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. the tall one. The other, the other 
no, her and uh, what's the what's the model one? Kendall Courtney. Oh uh, no, Kylie Jenner. Courtney short too. Yeah, Kylie. No, nah, Kylie short too. Is Kendall? It's the tall, skinny one that's an actual yeah. model. Model like oh, okay, like model or some shit. Now she was on that Pepsi commercial and shit. Kendall, uh, she five ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, her and her and Chloe like the only two tall, tall ones. The other ones is like pretty average height for women or short. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Davidson man, he throw them down, stretch all strong around what they think, man. Or wrap one of them arms around Kanye neck twice and choke the shit out of him like a boa constrictor. It could happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They man, they put a lot of perspective into things. I was like, eh, all right. <laughs> I know one thing, Kanye better invite Big Sean by that crib and uh drop off his ducats. Big Sean yeah, he wait. fuck out of Kanye if he don't get his money. And that's a big ass head. Big target, man. He went head, but shit out Kanye. Oh no, Kanye got a big ass head too, dog. Oh, oh. <laughs> what? I don't think I would want to get uh, a head but Kanye, man. Big jaw. Kanye got the big jaw and Big Sean got Head. But if mm. they go straight for Kanye forehead, he got the tender spot. But if he go for the jaw, it might be a might be a draw. This time on Celebrity Deathmatch, <laughs> <laughs> Kanye the Jaw West versus Big Sean, aka Big Head Sean. Find yeah. This is the lead up for the him versus the Maxilla. This is the lead up for the the uh, uh, main event match, which is Kanye versus Whoa. Music Bad Drake. Big Hand versus Big Jaw. I'm I, my, my, I'm gonna go with Big Hand. I, I think Pete Davidson beat the shit out of Kanye. I'm gonna be real. Honest. I don't think Kanye can fight. I, I'll be completely honest with you. I, I'm not saying he can't. This nigga might be like the next Floyd Mayweather, but nothing about his the way he carries himself. Saying. Yeah, I'm going to knock a nigga out. Everything Same. about him says, I'm going to pay a nigga to knock you the fuck out. Now, yeah, Kyle, he don't really. Pete like Davidson, I, I got secured. Pete Davidson, mm-hmm. he, 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 Pete Davidson probably weighed what I weigh. He probably like a buck seven or something, but six three. Uh-huh. Uh, it ain't a whole lot of, like, if he swing the end, but if, if Kanye get inside, it can get a jaw to the rib one time, man, it's a wrap. Cause it ain't a, it ain't a whole lot of holding that <laughs> that big flailing body together. Of Pete Davis. It is real methish, like you said. Little methish. I'm saying he a meth head, but he meth head. It's the yeah, he does. He does got him. Him. Uh, what's the other ones? Uh, MJK. <laughs> MG. What's the thing? Um, Gun Kelly. Grinning for no reason. <laughs> Who faced? Yeah, he was just like smiling like a proud dad or some shit. <laughs> like, what just happened? Like, <laughs> one of the babies just like do something. Like, they, they, they have one of them like, let me show you what I can do, dad moments or something. What happened? <laughs> he was just staring at me. Them little motherfuckers sleep. <laughs> and they were just grinning like, ah, I knew he was going to be something. He, he, opened, he opened his next case of blunts. <laughs> oh, perfectly rolled. <laughs> I ain't even got no more. The finest from Havana. Hand rolled by an old white. On coke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a little bit of coke on all cigars that come from anywhere other than America. Just because of the cocaine is going around in those other countries. Oh, yeah. Hey, Bobby, I need more, more, more than fish for the lift. I need more, more than fish. Have, have you ever smoked a Cuban cigar from like outside of the I, country? I have once, and let me tell you, I did not breathe. Oh my God. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's something in there. There's something in there. I'm trying to. Uh, in there. It's something. But, this is not this tobacco. It's something in there. <clears throat> nope. It's something in there. It's something in there. Another question is, you love me in the morning. <laughs> It's something in there. I'm playing. Something in there. I'm not even playing, dude. <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah. That nigga chopped and screwed and uh, Alvin and the chipmunks and everything. Y'all ain't see it. There's something in there. That was what was in there. 
There were some other people in there. <laughs> Look at face. <laughs> Please tell me what's going on in your brain as you make that face. Like we need a, uh, you know how they had Luther the anger translator. We need a face face translator. Like <laughs> what the fuck? Faces, faces, faces. The best face translator you can ever have. Wow, Chris was doing that. What the fuck you just said? I understand. What the fuck? I did it. It did get a little weird. <laughs> I'm gonna chop what you, did, what you just said, and I'm gonna make that a drop name. <laughs> random, random question, and then I'm with the good and fuckery. Random question because it just popped in my head. If you had a person to narrate your life story, who would it be? <laughs> <laughs> Book a T <tea> from Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming for you. Oh, for you, nigga. We coming for you to come say. That'll be the name of the book too. We coming for you, nigga. <laughs> to come say this, put dick in the back. We coming for you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Some goddamn ravens again. <laughs> oh, the raven, never more. All right, I digress. Oh no, um, shit. Uh, fuck. I say Morgan Freeman, but that's that's and everybody will say that. So I'm trying to think of the, the somebody on my list that's just not normal. It'd be just one person. If you got two people in mind, I got cause I got two people. In mind. Oh, that'll be fine. You get somebody to do like the first half of your life, and then somebody else come in like that mid. Oh, Tell me that when I did mine. God damn it. This, this, this is my idea. My idea Ooh. is Dave Hell for majority of it because I know majority of my life will be a comedy. And for all the action packed moments, Samuel L. Jackson or any time that I'm actually pissed off. Okay. 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 So I think it would see. be a perfect. <clears throat> I will go with. Uh, fuck. Let's see. I would go with Trick Daddy for my early, early childhood. Mm. Um, I, I don't even know. <laughs> I just imagine that voice. Um, you don't know that, man. Um, next, I go three stacks for the teens through 20s, early 30s, and then for my 30s through my 90s, I, I rock with, um, let's see, um, uh, fucking the yin yang twin. Mm. Collectively, both of them. Oh, shit. <laughs> I just seen them niggas do a Vlad in them. You threw that. I did see that too. I saw that too. I was about to <laughs> get the niggas. Yeah. Get the niggas. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be talking about his elderly. <laughs> it's going to be random. <laughs> yeah, nigga had them goddamn vegetables mashed up because, man, my damn teeth was hurting under. <laughs> and, and, and sugar checked out. <laughs> and for my answer, talk for Antonary, my last two days, Angela Bassett. Now that's abstract. Didn't see that coming. Okay. Solid. I think I'll leave a video. Did you already go, Pat? No, yeah, I already went. Dave okay. and, and Can I uh, add Sam. Yeah. Go ahead. I feel like I ain't know I had options like that. Like y'all done painted a mosaic of your life and shit. And I had just this one monotone ass voice throughout. So I'm gonna keep book of tea, but that's gonna be like that's gonna be like maybe it's 18, no, 17 through like 25. It's just gonna be book of tea. Before that, it's gonna be Donna Glover from zero to seventeen. And then, like, everything after that is going to be David Banner. <laughs> David Banner. Okay, I can see David Banner. But I would love, I would love to see Booker T say the version of you and Chewy at that fight. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> that fight <laughs> with Foose. Coming for you, nigga. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Hilarious, yo. And uh, Deja <laughs> for all of, uh, <laughs> for all the truth and faces part <laughs> it'll be Ahmed Johnson and Stevie right <laughs> <laughs> and for food 
I would have uh, David Spade or Rob Schneider. I think I would have my homeboy twin say some narrate some parts, but there's some parts I'm going to have to not let him narrate because then he would jump. They're going to be rolling through your shit through the whole fucking shit. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. You, I I know this is off subject. And this motherfucker, he left me for you. I got, I got this friend. Um, Matter of fact, I think him and Chewie is related. Um, my homeboy Core Powers, right? Yeah, Every bro. year, pride your ass. Yeah, Core Powers, because that nigga kind of looked like uh Bricks Belvedere from Battle Rap. <laughs> yo, yo, every year he hits me up to give me a happy birthday and to joke me out. <laughs> every, every freaking year, man. And what this dude said. <laughs> Happy birthday, shout out to the old man of the bunch, Mr. AARP, aka Black Predator, aka Senior Heinz Belvita, aka Murphy Lee's twin brother. Oh. Me and him used to joke at Lynn Haven Mall, and yeah. it would be so bad that people thought we were about it. Huh? Huh? What do you yeah. say? I don't follow. He, I used to just eat. I used to just, every time I get my burgers, I'll just say cheese and ketchup to call me Senior Heinz Velveeta or some shit. They used to always have the joke with cheese and ketchup with the burgers. So, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know how I got on this subject, but yeah, that nigga used to joke. He jokes me out every year <laughs> on my birthday and I have to like retaliate each year. So that he had a flex fit um, headband because his head's so big. But anyway, <laughs> That's the end of the good and fuckery, all you. Jesus. <laughs> like, sit here, man. So just... Oh, man. The oh, response is bad. And that also brings us to the end of another episode of the partner. Hey. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Before we go, we do have a couple of black business we want to promote this week. Um, first, we got um, Turtle Kicks by Derek Bland. That's Turtle Kicks, T-U-R-T-L-E-K-I-C-K-Z by Derek Bland. And you can find him on Facebook by his name or by Turtle Kicks. Um, the next, well, Turtle Kicks, before I go forward, Turtle Kicks is not a shoe company. They specialize in shoe restoration. Um, check them out, man. It does some good work. You can take care of bullshit, turn it into some good shit. And he a homeboy from from our childhood, man. Like 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 he a, he a old school OG homie, man. So oh yeah, oh yeah. Next, if you sneak ahead, I got the sneaker plug. Talking about raining sneakers. It's raining sneakers. Raining sneakers. R a y n i n sneakers by Jamal B. Find him on Facebook under Jamal Beasley. Um, he's your Jamal. Oh yeah, that's, that's a sneaker plug, man. Um, check his Facebook out. He got it. He got his inventory up. Um, he's easy to connect with. Easy, um, good prices and shipping and handling is really good too. Um, check him out, man. Got some good deals for y'all. And also as well, always we're gonna talk about my store. Yes, my store. Sir. Home team, our trade clothing by one and only if I see our trade, you know me face. Um, our trade clothing dot com, man. You can find us there, and you can find us on so thepartners.com. Find us everywhere. Google it. You can find me. Indeed, man. And, uh, shout out to uh, the Rodner, the other member of the partners, man, Roddy Sadler, man. He uh, definitely caught some the other night. And uh, just shout out to everybody who was at the live the other night, man, who was uh, checking out the inventory, man, and giving us the good feedback, man. We appreciate it. And the face works really hard, like literally daily, weekly. To like update the store, put out new materials, put out new fabrics, put out new designs. So like we appreciate it, man. Please go to entreclothing.com, check out the inventory. Like you will be very, very pleasantly surprised and ecstatic with your purchase if you get some there. And man, use the promo okay. code. Like get you a little get you a little change off that thing, man. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Promo code, promo code, pod squad eight three. Pod squad eight. Three. I know I'm mumbling. I know I talk fast sometimes, but hear me out. Hear me out. Pod, P O D, squad. Not going to spell it for you. Eight, three. That's it, y'all. And, and you know, don't, 
the pay for a price, man. If you're in the pod squad, go ahead, use that promo code and get you a little change off that thing and go ahead and rock your stuff. And when you get your Richard, make sure you send us a picture of it so we can definitely, you know what I'm saying, show people what it looked like in real time. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to uh Lil Sis for, for definitely rocking her uh AC eighty three ensemble. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. You know Thanks, what I mean? You even had the fresh J's to match, like, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm telling you, man, this this is quality clothing here, y'all. This ain't like some, you know, quick, you at the concert, and they just got them little cheap t-shirts real quick. Like, this is actually clothing, apparel, so check it out, man. Like I said, designs constantly being updated, and uh, yeah, man. Shout oh, out yeah, to- we just put some new shit out this week, too. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, and I did uh, tell them that... Uh, they may be able to find their own sneakers to wear with the AC83 very soon, straight on their site. Oh, so, yeah, definitely, definitely. I saw the uh, face showed up. 83s. It's just clean as fuck, yo. Like, yeah, get that, get that, get that, get that. But, um, yeah, man, so that's that. And while you, you know what I'm saying, spending your money with us, man, go ahead and always feel free if you want to support the podcast, if you want to see us keep growing on. Um, if you missed the live the other day, man, definitely go check that out because I, I definitely gave you some stuff that I'm working on uh, on my end as far as a lot of content that I'm trying to develop this year. So, uh, yeah, man, if you want to support us financially, see the podcast grow, um, help Pat continue, you know what I'm saying, his journey in the arts and growing the comic book, help Face continue to grow his brand and continue his fashion uh, design and journey. Like, go ahead, shoot us a cash app if you like. Dollar sign pod of tears one, dollar sign pod of tears one. That's dollar sign P O D N A T I Z one. Um, you can also support financially by going to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners. It's the podcast you watch, the partners. Um, and yeah, you can become a member for four ninety nine dollars per month, or you can donate for as little as a dollar. Membership comes with a lot of cool exclusive perks, so please check that out. Um, and yeah, you can also support on anchor.fm backslash the hyphen podnas. Go there. If you're a listener of the podcast and you prefer to listen instead of watch, please make sure you are listening on anchor.fm backslash the hyphen podnas. You can go ahead and become a monthly supporter there for $4.99, or you can also um, just Listen to the podcast there and help us out because we are monetized there. So every time you listen there, we get uh, ad revenue. So please go ahead and listen there. And um, yeah, those are the ways you can financially support us. If you again, if you want something for your money, like you want to support and you want something coming back to your home, go ahead and go to iTakeClothing.com because that also helps the brand as well. Um, and yeah, if you don't want to support in that way, man, the easiest thing you could do is always just like, comment, share, and subscribe on all platforms. And if you ever want to talk to us outside of the podcast, you don't want to leave a comment, you want to directly conversate with us. Or, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. What the fuck you just say? Directly converse with us. Oh, no, 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 no. That shit's in the dictionary, man. Conversates in the dictionary, man. Oh, God. We have devolved as a society. That's right. All right. Um, well, if you want to conversate with us offline or just, you know, have, continue the conversation past the podcast, Pat, how can they get in touch with us, man? You can conversate with us at T H E P O D N A S. See, that's Instagram, that's TikTok, that's Twitter. Am I missing one? There's Facebook. And uh, also on Facebook, Tiz Face Pat are the partner. So that's how you can get us at T H E P O D N A S. Indeed. We're also on Twitch and all of our live streams. You do go to Twitch now. So feel free to catch up if you're on there. Um, and yeah, man, um, if you can't remember none of the shit that all three of us just said, it was just too much promo, easy money. Go to the partners.com. That's T H E P O D N A S dot com. Everything's there. Go check it out. One stop shop. And yeah, man, that's it, man. We about this thing. We have had a great evening. We hope you have had a great time with us as well. Um, hope to hear y'all in the comments. Let us know what y'all thought. Did you agree? Disagree? Thought of something that we hadn't even thought of? Let us know because we want to continue the conversation with you. And as always, I have been one third of the boy along with. 
is the other third of the partners here, the Padawan, and I am along with Trish your boy face in the place and we out of here. Thank you. Indeed, man. And we love you. We about this thing.